should you upgrade your Jeep to a 2024 Wrangler? Is it worth it? And then also a small dash piece that I noticed that could hold the key to the future of Jeep Wrangler. Stay tuned, this is gonna be a fun video. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Matt with Dirt Road Cred. And if you can tell by my voice, I'm a little under the weather. So I'm gonna do my best, bear with me. But today I wanted to chat about should you upgrade your current Wrangler to a 2024? Now that we saw the complete release of these, we've saw a ton of options added on the interior, the exterior, some new additional options to the Willys. Is this upgrade worth it? I wanted to preface this by, we started out a little bit of a poll on our YouTube community tab, and we asked what your favorite part of the new redesign was. I gotta tell you guys, probably your least favorite part is the new grill. People seem to be absolutely ripping that apart. I personally don't mind it, and I think it's a good optional upgrade, or now it's not an optional, optional upgrade, but I think it's a good look to the new Wrangler. I think it gives it a little bit more depth and a little bit more detail. Personally, I think it's going to be a big upgrade, especially if you run a winch and a front bumper. You're easily going to be able to pull off the grill, get it into whatever you need to, and not have to disassemble the entire front bumper. But overall, I wanted to hear from you guys what your favorite part was. An overwhelming response was the new tech, the 12.3 inch screen, which is now standard in every single trim level. You heard that correct, so if you're an early adopter of the JL, Back in 2018, we personally had one with the 3.5 little screen. It probably wasn't much bigger than like a Game Boy, maybe a Game Boy Advance, and it was all black and white. For me personally, we'll have to see how the price reflects it. I know typically when you order more of a part and have it installed in more vehicles, the price does reflect that. Another reason to upgrade is kind of still a question mark on my mind, is whether or not the Dana 44 full float rear axle is only going to be in the Rubicon and the 392, or if it will be pushed to the Willys in the two doors and any of the Rubicon two doors. I'm not sure how that's going to look, but that would be a huge reason to upgrade if you're looking for increased trailer towing capacity, as well as a much, much stronger rear axle. I know with my Jeep, I can only tow 3,500 pounds. Being that with that low of a rating, it's not too much. I can only tow a small utility trailer or my small camping trailer. I would really like the 5,000 pound towing capacity. So if you're looking for an increase in either of those in the tech or the increased towing capacity, that's gonna happen with the 2024. The next thing I wanted to touch on is safety. Now the standard 2024 Wrangler is all gonna come with side curtain airbags along the front row and the second row, giving you the ability as well as your passengers to be much more safe in a side collision or a crash that does deploy those. That's a huge safety feature for me, and honestly, it's something I'm concerned with. I've got a little one that rides in the back. My wife rides with me. Sometimes the pups are in there. If something were to happen, I would really rather have those airbags on the side. I know it's just a little bit more when it comes to the protection, but a little bit more can make a difference, especially in a bad situation like that. Also on the Sport S and above, you're gonna get the advanced safety group, which includes the front collision avoidance. That's also gonna include the adaptive cruise control, which will automatically accelerate and brake, give you a speed parameter and let you stay in between the lines and also behind that front person. Now what I wanted to talk about is what year or what style of vehicle should you upgrade if you're looking at the 2024 Wrangler. This pertains into my later comment, but I think the 2024 is gonna be a great year to get all the features that you want. So get the better tech, get the naturally aspirated engine, get the 392, get exactly what you want, Plus a lot of cool additions came to base trim levels. If you guys are looking at the Willys, it now comes standard with the rear locker, which is a huge upgrade. It's got the rear locker, the Rubicon Highline fender flares, 33 inch tires and all that from the factory with a great warranty. That to me is a big deal and it's also a great value if it's all packaged up together. Now the other cool thing, if you guys are going from a later year JK or a later model JK, they're still bringing great value for a trade-in. So if you can upgrade to the latest and greatest model year, get out of your current Wrangler and then start modifying a new one, now would be a good time to do it, especially going into the summer season, which Jeep values do increase at the same time. That's a big one for me is wait until the summer because your jeep's trade-in value is going to go up the same way the temperature does <laughs> god just give me a sec i gotta i gotta maybe get a laws now if you have an earlier model jl so something between 2018 and 2020 i'd recommend this upgrade for you now unless you've got that jl completely built up it's exactly what you want and you never want to upgrade you still have got the same generation of jeep you just got a lot less of the tech back then you're also, your frame's probably starting to look a little bit worse than it did right off the factory. Maybe you've got a little bit of that hinge corrosion. And overall, you've got a decent amount of miles on it. Before the 2024s are sitting on lots and you can really see the new difference now, I would recommend getting one ordered and seeing what you can do to either trade yours or sell it. As soon as these 2024s go on the lot, 
the 23s that are sitting right next to them, the values are going to plummet. That's just something that I'm going to tell you guys. If you see one with all the latest and greatest tech, one right next to it for a little bit less money, it is not going to hold the same value. So if you guys have got a 2018 to a 2020, are looking to make the switch into a brand new Wrangler, definitely get the order placed and then check out what you can do to get yours sold before yours comes in. That would be my biggest recommendation to make sure you get the best deal for your Jeep and you also get a great upgrade. Now for you guys with same boat as I'm in, a 21, a 22, or a 23, we read a lot of comments that's like, oh my gosh, I need to trade mine in. I can't believe they came out with this. This is so much better. It's not that crazy of a difference. I mean, yeah, the new grill, which everyone seems to hate anyways, wireless CarPlay, that can be achieved with one of those magic boxes on Amazon. So I wouldn't fret about that. We can even add one of those on the channel. If you guys are really interested, we can do wireless CarPlay in my Jeep. We'll hook it all up and show you exactly how it works. It is not that hard to do. The same cluster, so the same tack, same speedometer is in the 2024. You do get the side curtain airbags and potentially the full float rear axle. That's gonna come at a price though. So if you guys got a great deal on a 22, like I did, if I built out the same 23 as my current Jeep, it's like six grand more MSRP. A 24 is probably gonna be seven or eight grand more than my 22 was. So definitely enjoy what you've got. I would say hold on to it, especially if you've got the 8.4, you got the Extreme Recon, heck, you've got the super rare 25 bolt Extreme Recon wheels. Just hang on to it. I gotta tell you guys, I'm personally not the biggest fan of some of the new wheels that came out on the 2024. I absolutely hate them on the Rubicon 392. I just don't know. They look like the Sahara High Altitude to me, and it is not a good look. I personally like the 21 and 22 Extreme Recons with the 25 bolts. So if you guys have still got that, my dad's got a Willys, and they look fantastic. It's not going to be a huge upgrade for you unless you need that Dana 44 full float, or you've got to be like me and upgrade every other year. So. That's what I would recommend if you've got a later model JL, is to just hold off a little bit, see what the pricing looks like, and then make a decision on that. So now one of the last points that I wanted to make here in today's video was, I noticed a small little piece on the dash, right? When I was looking at the 2024, we were looking at the interior gallery, I saw a couple videos posted from the New York Auto Show, I saw something setting there. And initially I was like, oh, that's a pretty cool homage to a lifted JL and a lifted Gladiator. And what it was, was a filler piece underneath the headlight and interior ambient lighting. And at first it, it didn't really strike anything to me. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. That's, that's nice to see that they threw a little Easter egg in there. But then I thought about it a little bit further. And where the placement of that filler piece is, is exactly where the 4xE controls are located for any 4xE model. So if you guys have a 4xE or you're familiar with them, underneath the headlight switch, there's four buttons there, or maybe three, no, there's four. Gas cap, hybrid mode, e-save, full battery, they go across there. What I found really interesting is that in the past, Jeep has made two dashes. So they had two separate dashes, one with that panel, one without it. The Gladiator does have a little panel down there too, but for every single 2024 Wrangler to either have a filler plate or the 4xE, that kind of lets me into something is that by 2025, just like they made the statement on there that all Jeeps will be electrified, I think that that might hold true. If you guys can do a little bit of thinking like I did, that would cost a lot to manufacture a whole new dash and have it ready to go for all the lineup, but making that filler panel in there makes it really easy to be 4xE compatible or add on some sort of other accessories. That is just my personal thought. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. And honestly, let me know what you think about electrification. Now, don't make it too too violent in the comments down there because I think there is some good electrification, especially if they would do it with a three liter Hurricane. But overall though, will this be the last year of the 2024 Rubicon 392? We're gonna have to wait and see. And honestly, we've been saying that since it came out in 2021, but at some point, these vehicles are not gonna be around forever. I just thought you guys would like that little tidbit that we noticed and why I think it's so significant. Now I know we talked about a lot today and I thank you guys for bearing with me as I am a little bit under the weather. This isn't my typical talking voice here, but I wanted to talk about the 2024 rain, shine, sickness and health. I love talking about new Jeeps and I know you guys do too. Now until next time though, my name is Matt with Dirt Road Cred and I want you to get out there and earn yours.